Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouses invite you to come by and register for a trip to two for two to the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl. Airfare, accommodations, tickets, all provided by Lowe's. Lowe's knows Home Improvement. And Danny Cannell knows where Kez McCorvey is on any given moment. Right now he's relaxing on the bench, but on two particular plays, one for 48 yards after a double fake, and then a 62-yard strike that set Florida State up inside the five. That has created touchdown walk-ins by Zach Crockett, who has nine touchdowns on the season, and Florida State now leading 28-6. falls off the tee for Dan Mowry gives you an indication of how that wind is swirling on the surface of Bill Campbell Stadium. Thankfully though the rains have held off. There's a 60. Oh now there you go. Now we're going to get rain. You had to talk about it. Is it coming? Maybe so. Adam Geis at the four. Upfield to the 15 yard line. Duke's return game has been stymied. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, Fred Goldsmith has been very upset at his offense in the last couple of series. Pretty obvious. Says they're not getting the right kind of leadership in the offensive line from all positions. He's trying to jumpstart it before halftime. He's going to change quarterbacks. He's going to put Joe Pickens in and try to get that vertical passing game going. Pickens, a senior out of Brooklyn, Ohio. 6'4", 230 pounds, 67% from the field. The problem for Pickens is that Florida State defensive front's going to come flying at him. Watch into that Florida State unit. Here's Pickens' first down pass. Incomplete intended for John Farquhar. Threw that high outside fastball to Farquhar, and he wasn't able to come up with it. That's... That's what happens, whether it's Fisher or Pickens in the ball game. Now you're down three touchdowns. You know that defensive line's not going to worry too much about the run game. They're just going to come flying at you. So you, you end up doing things just a little tighter, not with the right kind of tempo that you want to have. New quarterback have completed only two, two, two passes today, none to their tight end. Pass upfield intended for Corey Thomas incomplete. He alleges that he was held by Byron Capers, but the appeal falls on deaf ears. Spence Fisher, his card was two for 14, 12 yards and two interceptions. Well, and you hit the, the big point a, a moment ago, Steve. We had the Clemson-Duke game two weeks ago in which they threw 12 balls to the tight end. So far this afternoon, the tight ends have been shut out. Hyatt is the tight end. Actually, Farquhar is this time. Hyatt's out in a slot. Here's the pass, complete to Jensen. The second reception of the day, but it's not for much. Out to the 18, gain of about two. Todd Rebo, who has an interception today, in on the tackle. T tried to run the quick fold screen, but once again, a three and out scenario for the Duke offense. Florida State fans loving the job here the last two weeks at home by their defensive unit and they've got 10 men on the line of scrimmage coming after John Kruger. They've come close to a couple of his kicks today. Cass McCorby is back. A rocket by Kruger. McCorby at the 30. And Patrick Manley and Jake, uh, Jason Ritz Picked him up for the tackle at the 39-yard line. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and a use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. A 50-yard kick by John Kruger, a 9-yard return by Kez McCorvey, and Florida State has the football back with 3.04 left to go in the first half, up 28-6. A lot of time on the field for that Duke defense in this first half. Six three and outs for the Duke offense. This first half. Here's Kadak. Pursuit is heavy. The pass is complete to Omar Ellison at the 46-yard line of Duke. Jamal Ellis drove him out, but it's another first down play. 
Florida State going for the knockout punch. They want to put this game away at halftime. In all of their comments to us yesterday, Jack, they said the longer they let Duke hang around within two touchdowns of the lead, the more confidence Duke will get, and it would cause problems. You're right. They want to take care of Duke early. Pinnell on first down. And again, the opposite side for 13 more yards to the 32. Brandon Pollock in coverage. Danny Cannell has thrown more than 30 passes in this first half, and he is nearing 300 yards passing in the first half. Shows the type of confidence they have in what he's been able to do today. 195 of that to Kez McCorp. Blitz is on for Duke. been a Halloween nightmare for Duke. They come with the blitz, and Danny Cannell has the perfect play call, and Warwick Dunn in open field is a time bomb waiting to explode. 24 yards downfield. Mowry in for the point after out of Cannell's hole. The kick is up, and it is good. Mowry getting some practice as Florida State leads 30 to six with 2.42 left to go in the first half. Good play call here. You see everybody coming. Levance McQueen, the linebacker, blitzing. Good blocking downfield as well. Good block upfield by E.G. Green, the freshman out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. He did a nice job of blocking on the cornerback, and that was the last guy really to have a shot at Warwick Dunn. Let's head to the sidelines and find out what's happening at halftime for Mike Hogwood. Well, Steve, we'll get a quick comment from Bobby Bowden uh, before he goes to the locker room with his team. We're going to tell you about our player of the week, our play of the week. And we've also got a special look back in ACC history at these Duke Blue Devils in the early 30s who had an opportunity to play in the Rose Bowl against Oregon. And we will be taking you and showing you about the only time the Rose Bowl was ever played in Wallace Wade Stadium. All that's coming up in just a couple of minutes at halftime. And he'll still have time left over to hop on Renegade and move to midfield as he promised us. <laughs> 2.42 left to go in the first half of play. Before all of that fun begins, we've still got some offense to dispose of. And the Duke Blue Devils, with Joe Pickens now at quarterback, will try to do just that. Mowry getting set to kick. But three quick scores by the Florida State Seminoles have drastically changed the complexion of this. Dice at the three. from Columbia, South Carolina, in on the stop of the 14-yard line. And that pretty much mirrors what Duke has been able to do all day as far as field position. Their best field position, their own 43. Florida State has a day full of yardage in a half. Well, Derek Alexander told us yesterday that it was as good a week of practice as they've had at Florida State. I mean, it has start. It, is, it, is, it has sunk in now here at Florida State how important conference play is. You see Travis Sherman being attended to on the Florida State sidelines. They want to maintain that win streak in conference play. First and ten. Here's Robert Baldwin. Duke doesn't want to get things out of perspective here. Devin Bush comes up with a stop on Robert Baldwin, who has first down yardage out to the 26-yard line. You know, Fred Goldsmith yesterday told us, he said, I mentioned, boy, this is a great chance for you to go for the title and all of this. He said, wait a minute. We got four heavy weeks, and this is just one of them. We saw Baldwin's numbers on the day. Pickens trying to elude the left, and Connell Spain makes the drop. Third such sack of Duke quarterbacks this afternoon. Trying to get it out to Baldwin out on... The sidelines, but Spain with the penetration inside, just as he was ready to throw. You see, Canel Spain came into the picture. Here comes Pickens to throw. His pass is complete, and yes, he has a tight end. He just found him at the 25-yard line, actually out of the slot to Akaya. 
That's one of the wrinkles that Duke wanted to throw at Florida State today. They wanted to feature two tight ends. Kayat in the slot, and they wanted to park to move around. Third down. Pass complete to Jensen. Not much yardage there at the 28. He's still going to be well shy of the first down. The punting unit will return to action. Florida State called a timeout. Wow. With a minute 26 left to go, they're going to get the football back. And they exhaust their final timeout. So Bobby Bowden is serious about making sure that Duke stays down for the count. Well, I think, to be honest with you, Steve, I think that was the exuberance of the players. You can tell by Bobby's reaction on the sidelines. Bobby is knows that you never want to rub somebody's face into it because it'll come around and get you in the end. And I mean, he wants to be very convincing about maintaining the streak, but you have to keep some things in perspective. And I think the, the players felt like, hey, we can get another score here. And Bobby said, hey, you know, there's uh, 30 more minutes of football to play. Let's, let's relax a little bit. Let's not give them any motivation in the locker room to think about it. Kruger is on the kick, as he has so often this first half. And this is McCorvey calling for the fair catch at the 20-yard line. Well, Florida State's had a little bit of problem with their kick return game. That's why Colsey's not in there right now. And McCorvey is back there. There are some punts they thought they should have had returns on last week and didn't get. But they've got the football back, and they have a nice... 35 to 6 cushion that they'd like to see grow a little bit here in the final minute and 18. No Kentucky Derby offense this afternoon. It has been the number one unit with a substitution here and there throughout this first half. And what a first half for that guy, Danny Cannell. 286 yards passing in two quarters. First and 10. Florida State at their own 20 yard line. Warwick Dunn and Zach Crockett are the setbacks. Cannell. but it is incomplete. He was out of bounds. Ellison and Andre Cooper have caught touchdown passes so far this first half. Warwick Dunn and Zach Crockett have scored the other two times. Second down and ten. I stopped the clock with a minute 11 left. Here comes Dunn. A saving tackle by Abdul Aleem. I don't know if I've, I've seen at this age as a sophomore uh, a young running back who does a better job of making people miss. He has got that spin move down to a science. Watch this. See me? Now you don't. Cannell sees him again in the screen. Again, the southern step from Dunn. He's a pleasure to watch after the 46-yard line. Except, of course, if you're, if you're in a Duke uniform, Granville and Farmer have probably seen enough of his antics, but he gets it done out to the 46-yard line. Another gain on the play of about 12 yards. 28 seconds. Clock rolling here in the first half. the receiver at the 26 yard line they have no ability to stop the clock other than grounding the ball 28 yards downfield to the 26 clock will roll now as they set it they're out of timeout and Cannell will ground the football to get another stoppage of the clock the Seminoles are in shape for a field goal which would be rather long at this point but it would be with the wind at their back if they were looking for just any score and in second down and ten Fred Goldsmith said let's just get into the locker room and talk this thing over at halftime here's Cannell 
The blitz is on. Cannell looking deep for Cooper. End zone, no. Flag on the play interference. Keep in mind, in college football, the interference call is a 15-yard penalty. So it would not put it down on the one, and they have three seconds left, so they'll get another play, and, and they'll get the field goal try from Maori. Brandon Pollock got caught coming up on the play, came back, and that's a good call. Made no effort to play the football. He's just playing the man right there. It's a had six. So if I hadn't hit him, he'd have had six. Well, Vance McQueen dotting the eye on Cannell at the end of the play. And that one hurt a little bit. So here's Dan Lowry on to kick the field goal. This will be a 28-yard kick from the left hash mark. Lowry on the season is one for two. The kick is good. And that ends the first half capped by the Florida State Seminoles who explode in the second quarter and they lead the Duke Blue Devils here in intermission 38 to 6 Seminoles leave the field touchdowns this afternoon from Andre Cooper Omar Ellison in the air Zach Crockett twice on the ground and Warwick Dunn and let's go to the sidelines right now with Bobby Bowden is our Mike Hogwood. What a difference a week makes, at least for a half. Yeah, we played better today. And uh, again, the team hasn't played to its potential yet, and I think we're a little bit more like it today. Yeah, you have to be happy with the play of your quarterback, at least in that first half. So great, oh, yeah. stood in that pocket and taken it's, some Yeah, pressure. and there's been so much pressure on him. You know, when you have a bad day like last year, which, which would have been a good day if I'd have been a quarterback, there's so much pressure the next ball game, so I'm glad he's having some success. What do you do? You sit on the lead now, or are you going to come out and keep the offense rolling? Well, we need to take the opening kick off and try to score, and then start subbing a lot of people. That's what we ought to do. All right. That's Bobby Bowden headed to the locker room with the Florida State Seminoles. It's been all Florida State here in the first half at Tallahassee. The offense has been really strong. They lead Duke 38-6. to Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by... Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. By Hardee's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By BC Powder. No matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than BC Powder. And by your local Carolina Dodge dealer, home of the minivan store and America's truck stop. South Carolina coast where Nicholas, Player, Fazio, and Die play together. A place as challenging as it is beautiful, where the wind can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. The place? Kiowa Island Resort, home of the 1991 Ryder Cup matches. The price? Only $59, but only for a limited time. So call 1-800-654-2924 now and reserve the best. Okay, these guys are the party people. I mean, look at them. They are hungry. So then these guys here, they're the host team. They send this guy over here to Hardee's for fresh fried chicken. 
It's the perfect play. Hardy's chicken deal is just $5.99. Eight pieces of chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. Okay, watch the replay. Eight pieces of Hardy's chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. So when these guys come rushing in, here's all this chicken to tackle. When you toss a party, make the big play. Have plenty of Hardy's fried chicken to pass around. Our Molsonite ACC Player of the Week is Tyrone Davis from Virginia. Davis, a senior from South Boston, Virginia, caught five passes against North Carolina for 124 yards and two touchdowns. Virginia upset 15th ranked North Carolina 34 to 10. It was Virginia's seventh win in the last eight meetings and the offense clicked thanks to Tyrone Davis, our Molson Ice Player of the Week. Halftime in Tallahassee at Doe Campbell Stadium. It has been all Florida State. The Seminoles walloping the Blue Devils 38 to 6 again. We're in halftime. Mike Hogwood with you now. Florida State, it has been on the offensive side of the ball. As you heard Bobby Bowden say, some great decisions on the part of his quarterback, Danny Cannell, who's been under a lot of scrutiny over the last week. And how about the receiver, Kez McCorvey? He's made some magnificent catches and some great runs after catching the ball. And then as Steve and Jack have told you, Warwick Dunn, what an incredible player he is to watch on offense. And give some credit to that Florida State defense as well. Derek Brooks, Derek Alexander, and the rest of the guys have put a lot of pressure on Spence Fisher and Joe Pickens, and that accounts for our 38-6 score. Let's go back one week ago, what do you say, and check out our Play of the Week. Our Hardy's Play of the Week. Last Saturday, Duke at Wake Forest, Grove Stadium, Winston-Salem. Duke's junior linebacker, John Zwanish, will recover a fumble by Wake's Rusty LaRue. He'll take it 62 yards for a Duke touchdown. Swanich's touchdown put Duke ahead 21 to nothing and route to a 51-26 win over the Deeks. Duke's defense forced six turnovers and scored on three of them. That's our play of the week. Florida State's band out on the field right now. They're happy. Everybody in this stadium happy. Big lead for Florida State at halftime over the Duke Blue Devils. brand beef is raised in the West, but it's fluent in a lot of languages. W.D. Brand Beef, from Winn-Dixie, the beef people. Wild Dunes, South Carolina's premier oceanfront golf resort. Located just 15 miles from Charleston via the newly opened Isle of Palms Connector, Wild Dunes offers two spectacular golf courses designed by Tom Fazio. The world-ranked Lynx course hugs the Atlantic Ocean, while the challenging Harbor course borders the intercoastal waterway. Wild Dunes customized golf packages start at just $69. Call today for more information and reservations. Wild Dunes, Charleston's island resort. From the preservation of our forests to the conservation of the plants and animals that inhabit them, environmental issues have a long history at Duke University. For decades, Duke students and researchers have worked in an outstanding academic climate to answer some of the world's most urgent problems, like the destruction of tropical plants used for medicine or adapting to the damage caused by ozone and acid rain, finding answers for the future. Duke University. This message presented by the Atlantic Coast Conference. At Florida State University, we are building for the future, but architecture is only part of the plan. We're also building a world-class research program where scientists synthesize rare cancer-fighting drugs, where the discovery of bacteria could lead to new pharmaceuticals, and where the most powerful magnetic fields in the world are produced. It's also where the Carnegie Foundation has bestowed its highest designation, Research One. We are Florida State University, where research reaches the sky. Delta, the airline of ACC country, is proud to bring you another ACC football, one for the books. The 1942 Rose Bowl moved to Durham, North Carolina, because of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. 
Large crowds were banned on the West Coast, and bowl officials jumped when Duke offered to host the 42 Classic. The Blue Devils, 9-0 on the season and the second highest scoring team in the nation, hosted Oregon State, who had just won their first Pac-10 title in school history. Duke won the coin toss and elected to receive and promptly fumbled away the opening kickoff, a play that set the tone for a rain-soaked afternoon in Durham. A crowd of 56,000 watched the Blue Devils keep Oregon State out of the end zone on that possession, but they could not keep them out later in the first quarter. On third and eight from the Duke 15, Beaver quarterback Durden faked the pass that left the Duke defense standing and ran 15 yards around the right side for a 6-0 Oregon State lead. Place kicker Warren Seamus added the extra point to make the score Oregon State 7, Duke nothing. Oregon State owned most of the first quarter of the Rose Bowl, but Duke took charge in the second. Blue Devil All-American wingback Steve Latch gave the Beaver defense trouble all afternoon. Legendary Duke head coach Wallace Wade called Latch the greatest back he'd ever coached, and he showed Oregon State why. On Duke's first scoring drive, Latch took the snap and ran a reverse 22 yards to the Beaver 9-yard line. On third down, Latch's number would come up again, and he ran right into the end zone to pull Duke to within a point. Bob Gant added the extra point for Duke, and the two teams went into halftime tied at seven. The third quarter was one of the wildest in Rose Bowl history. Three touchdowns were scored between the two teams within five minutes. The first score came from Oregon State on a trick play. Beaver halfback Bob Deathman found George Zellick open for a 22-yard touchdown on the halfback option. Seamus' extra point made the score Oregon State 14, Duke 7. Two minutes later, Duke tied the score at 14. Winston Siegfried scored from one yard out in a steady downpour. The Blue Devils' momentum would be short-lived. Just two plays after the kickoff, Bob Deathman fired a bomb up for grabs. Oregon State's Gray gets under the pass, then shakes off a Duke defender and runs 68 yards for a touchdown and a 20-14 lead. Duke added a safety in the fourth, but fell short 20 to 16 in the only Rose Bowl to ever be played outside of Pasadena, California. This has been another ACC football one for the books, brought to you by Delta. At Delta, you'll love the way we fly. A game for the ages in Wallace Wade Stadium here in Tallahassee. A game Florida State will remember from this season. They lead Duke at halftime with 38 points already on the scoreboard. Certainly the best half of football so far this season for Florida State where everything has really clicked offensively and defensively for the Seminoles. They're in the locker room now try to continue it in the second half. Right now, let's take a look. At the best of the ACC by Pepsi, Mike Groh of Virginia is the league's leading quarterback. Scott Milanovic from Maryland, number two passers, Spence Fisher and Danny Cannell both playing this game today. You know Danny Cannell's going to move up in those stats. Robert Baldwin having a tough time running the football against his Florida State defense today. What a year Brian Fitzgerald of NC State is having. The receivers, Jeroy Simon, Kez McCarvey, he's had a great day today. Eddie Goins of North Carolina State is number three. Bill Kayad of Duke playing in this game. Jamal Cox of Georgia Tech is the league's leading tackler. And that is the Pepsi best of the ACT. Well, the band has got this crowd in a frenzy here. The football team has as well. Florida State walloping Duke at halftime. Back after this word from your local ACC station. The job of Secretary of State's been compared to sleepwalking. I want to change that. I'm Ron Saunders. As Secretary of State, I'll have a vote equal to the governor's on important issues like education, crime, and the state budget. I'm a fifth generation Floridian, and I care about this state. That's why as a state legislator, I supported local control over schools, more prisons and prevention programs, and started a toll-free citizens hotline that's cut millions in government waste. I'm Ron Saunders. As Secretary of State, I'll be wide awake and working for you. 
Do you pay your fair share in taxes? In Florida, the gambling cruise ships don't. They take in millions, pay zero in state and local taxes. Indian casinos, they get rich off poker and slot machines and pay zero in taxes. Gambling tax loopholes created by the politicians. Fight back with Proposition 8, Limited Casinos. A yes vote will force the politicians to limit, regulate, and tax casinos. Yes, unlimited casinos to get our fair share. Courtesy Nissan does it again. Get ready, because everything's on sale. If it's on our lot, it's on sale now. 95 Nissan Maximus and 240. On sale. 95 Nissan Quest and Sentra. On sale. 95 Nissan trucks in a tremendous new selection of colors. Even the most popular car on the market, the 95 Nissan Altima, is on sale now. Incredible inventory, great selection, and special financing. You snooze, you lose. Because everything's on sale now at Courtesy Nissan. Highway 90 West at the Capitol Circle. Wait a minute, Jeb. You're the one who's not telling the truth. The Miami Herald says your ads take liberty after liberty with the facts. You're distorting the truth about Childs' record. Your tax and spend charge is outrageous. In fact, most new employees under Childs have been prison guards to keep criminals locked up. And there's more you're not telling us. Under Martinez, you advocated the largest tax increase in Florida history. Your business career is checkered with questionable deals. Perhaps the Palm Beach Post said it best. Jeb Bush's whole campaign is a con job. On December 30th, send a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number to the address on the screen and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. The winner will be announced during the ACC Game of the Week on November 19th. You must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Right now, it's time for the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company with a vision to power your dreams. Number 10, Michigan losing to Wisconsin. How about Nebraska over Colorado in the third quarter, 17 to nothing. Also on our Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, Arkansas and Auburn losing in the second quarter. A surprise, Clemson 10 nothing now over Wake Forest. That game being played down in Death Valley. Well, in the second half, it's been some performance for Florida State. Can they keep it going? Right now, I'll tell you some guys going to keep it going. Our game announcers, Steve Martin and Jack Oregon. Well, thank you, Mike. I guess one guy who's kept it going this afternoon, all afternoon, for the Florida State Seminoles has been Danny Cannell. You've got to marvel at the day that he's had. He's had an outstanding afternoon, and as Bobby Bowden talked to Mike just before he went off for the halftime conversation, he said, it's nice to see Danny have the success after the tough week last week, and, and really the two tough ball games in terms of the criticism he was getting outside of uh, the Florida State uh, camp, if you will. That's true. And, of course, the Ford halftime stats reflect the domination of Florida State, especially a lot of that damage done in the second quarter. And if you look at those passing yards, to think the nearly 200 of that to one man, Kez McCorvey. Kez McCorvey's had a great first half. 332 yards passing and a half for Danny Cannell. That is outstanding. And the uh, time of possession just about even, but doesn't tell you anything about the way things went. There were a few bright spots for Duke in that first half, Steve. And we're going to see one of them right now. When Duke thought they were still in the ball game, their defense turns a situation into a touchdown. Actually, it's their special teams. Kruger gets the punt away, and of course, the punt will be caught by James Colsey, but what happens after is special for Duke. Lamar Marshall forces the turnover. It kicks free, and Tijon Redmond comes up with the ball, takes it into the end zone. The special teams scoring the touchdown. They have turned turnovers into scores all year, but for Florida State in this ball game, it was the combination of Danny Cannell and Kez McCorvey. Their pressure, Cannell picked up the blitz, finds McCorvey on a crossing pattern. He doesn't score a touchdown. 195 yards in receptions without a score in the first half for Kez McCorvey. And when they weren't throwing the ball to McCorvey and company, they were giving it to Warwick Dunn. And this this electrifying runner is so much fun to watch. This is vintage Dunn right there, slipping and sliding right into the end zone. And Warwick Dunn had himself a great first half, but McCorvey and Cannell, the connection has worked for close to 200 yards. And Florida State leads Duke here at intermission, 38-6. to six. All of us are driven by something different. And yet millions of people have found that no matter what road life takes them down, they enjoy the ride more in a Ford car or truck. Enjoy the new ideas and craftsmanship. Appreciate the value. With Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car, F-Series, America's best-selling truck, and five of the country's ten best-sellers made by Ford, it seems as if a lot of people have driven a Ford lately. 
Our universities are reaching out to their communities. We're excited that student athletes and college staff are volunteering with United Way programs. All of us have a responsibility to give something back, and it's a vital part of our student athletes' learning experience. Let's go. We're touching ACC communities in a wonderful way by helping people who really need help. Together, we're making a difference, a difference that lasts a lifetime. ACC and United Way, reaching out to our community. Relax Fit Jeans from Lee. So I did some checking and I found out $2.99 is really the same thing as $3, except it's a penny less. So some burger joints got a meal, cost $2.99. Big whoop. Who cares if it's only $2.99 if I'm not going to like eating it? But if you make it taste good, you know, like a whopper, flame broiled, not fried. Maybe throw in some fries and a drink. I'll gladly pay you $2.99. <laughs> hey, I didn't go as high as. 302. Burger King. Get your burgers worth. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, where people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By Pepsi. Be young. Have fun. Drink Pepsi. By Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. By Lee Apparel, maker of regular, relaxed, and easy fit jeans and casual pants. Lee is the brand that fits. By Delta Airlines, the airline of ACC country. You'll love the way we fly. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by the all-new Ford Windstar. The future of minivans begins today. An explosive second quarter has Florida State leading Duke as we get to ready to take the turn into the third, 38-6. Here at Doug Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, along with Fred Goldsmith, here's Mike Hogwood. Fred, what are you going to have to do to get some offense going in this game? Well, for one thing, we've got to keep our poised. We've got to catch the football in the short routes. And if we can do that, then we can mix up the run and the pass. But right now, we haven't had enough time to throw anything deep and we've dropped the short ones and they've been able to stuff the run so it's been a very frustrating half but we got to keep our heads up and adjust to the speed of the game that florida state has they've got tremendous speed and we have to adjust to that which quarterback will we see on that opening i uh, will probably start fisher and, and good chance to come back with joe later on okay fred goldsmith head coach of the duke blue devils trying to get something going here early in the second half you heard him say adjust to the speed of the game the quickness of florida state was a concern all week to fred goldsmith it's not going to change a whole lot the the final four games of this season for Duke because Virginia next week has an outstanding defense as well. NC State and North Carolina to follow in order beyond that. 38-6, Florida State in the lead. They wanted to put an early knockout punch. We'll see if it's stuck. Here's Adam Dice at the seven. Dice straight ahead. <laughs> Looks like a rugby squamish there. Zach Crockett on special teams with the tackle. And Spence Fisher, as you heard Fred Goldsmith say, he was going to come out first. And then maybe in the second series, you might see Joe Pickens. And those numbers, Spence certainly wants to improve on. He's been hampered on and off this year, Steve, with, with a, a gimpy knee. He's worn a sleeve on occasion. Not wearing it today, but you can see him jogging out to the huddle. He's probably not at 100%. First and 10 for the at a slow first half and Baldwin was hit originally by Andre Watchworth and it almost seemed as much Jack's reaction to Watchworth's attempt to strip the ball as it was for him to tackle it. Well Andre Wadsworth, the redshirt freshman, has really started to be a factor. Look at the difference in numbers so far for Rob in this game, but Wadsworth has really become a factor in recent weeks at that nose guard spot, replacing the injured Enzo Armella. Second down and a long nine. 
Play action. Passes over the head of David Lohman. Sam Coward covering on the play, but that's just what Fred Goldsmith was talking about, trying to keep the poise. That's what the speed does to you. You feel like you've got to do everything quicker, and you squeeze the ball a little harder, you throw it a little longer, and then all of a sudden, passes that you could do with your eyes closed, now you can't complete if you walked out and handed it to the guy, or if you did, he dropped the ball. Opelenik is a slot, Corey Thomas to the wide side of the field. Jensen to the top. Four-man rush is on. The pass to Corey Thomas complete. Thomas has the first down at the Duke 37-yard line. 15-yard hookup between Spence Fisher and Corey Thomas. Derek Brooks in on the tackle for Florida State. Well, you could hear the big sigh of relief on the far side as the Duke sideline sees its offense get its Initial first down after a lot of three and outs on the series in the second quarter. Six, in fact, Jack, in the first half. Pass completed, Jensen. Brooks in pursuit. Has help from Coward. It's a gain of three. So Duke trying to... Get some sort of drive accumulated here. Get started in the right fashion in the second half. Trailing 38 to 6. As much a drive to get Spence Fisher's confidence back into the ball game as it is to get Duke upfield. Four for 17 on the afternoon now for Fisher for 30 yards. Second down and seven. Ask is complete to Loman. Loman is out over the 46-yard line where he's going to be a yard shy of the first down. Sam Coward picks him up a gain of six. So bit by bit, Duke moving the football. This drive started at their own 22. Football, like any other sport, really depends on confidence and rhythm. And Florida State had taken both of those elements away from Spence Fisher in the first half. He's trying to regain it third and one down 38-6 Fisher with a spin the pass is blocked by James Roberson Roberson got a hand on it Duke's offense is saying let us go for it but uh, Fred Goldsmith sees the scoreboard and he sees maybe his defense can Get a little help. It's well rested, having sat through halftime. Good preparation by the defensive unit of Florida State. Duke likes to run that little naked boot, dump the ball to the tight end in short yardage sometimes, and Roberson made the good play to break it up. Here's our third punt returner of the day for Florida State, Samari Roll, the true freshman. He's a defensive back by trade. That's the seven-yard line, and he is brought down by Lamar Marshall. Marshall, who knocked the football loose and set up Redmond's touchdown, as Fisher talks upstairs to Mike Heimerdinger and company. Suggestions on the next drive, but right now the defense has been blessed with pretty decent position at the seven-yard line. So the punt is 47 yards by Kruger, and it'll be Florida State at the seven. 38-6, Florida State leading Duke. You heard Bobby Bowden say he wants to get a score on this first offensive possession, and then he feels like he can substitute. Long drives are not out of the order for Florida State. Here comes Warren Dunn. Dunn roars to a hole in the middle out to the 13-yard line. Abdul Alim and Ray Farmer in on the tackle. Dunn had 77 yards on five carries in the first half, and he goes... Almost 10 yards on this one. That's pretty good productivity. Bad 86 yards and six carries. Yeah, that's fair. Very fair. Florida State, from an offensive standpoint, long drives, as we said, they don't mind them. They've had something like 15 scoring drives in excess of 70 yards. 13, as a matter of fact. They're close, and they have the first down on Warren Dunn to the 18-yard line. Bobby Bowden also told Mike Hogwood at halftime that 
this team has not played to its potential yet offensively. That first half was as close a facsimile as you'd want to have, I think, Coach. Well, I'll tell you, with the offensive injuries and the suspension problems that they had at the first of the season, they haven't had that offensive line together for one game, two games back to back. The pass to Cooper incomplete. That's, That's the first bad ball that Danny has thrown. Last week, he short hopped a few of those out cuts. That was the first one that he really just didn't get enough on because he had Cooper open. He has gone to the wide receivers today more than any day in a long time. Want to be want to be lonely in that Florida State offense? Be a tight end. Better block. <laughs> Canell blitzes on from the safety. He throws it up for grab. Ellis tries to pick it off and can. What an opportunity for Duke. Zayd Abdul Alim was putting all kinds of heat. The free safety came in on a blitz. Canell knew that he had. Cooper going on a post route, but boy, he threw this ball like a, a fly ball in baseball, and Ellis, who was way off the ball, was nearly able to get to it and come up with the interception. Third and ten. Florida State on third down convergence this afternoon. Here comes Lloyd Gunn, and Bernard Holsey wraps him up at the original line of scrimmage, the 18, and they'll not get it here. So Duke's defense held Fred Goldsmith went away from a motion on fourth and one. He punted the ball, gave his defense field position, and they responded. And they'll have their best field position all day, regardless of how well Sean Liss hits this punt. He has not had to do it too often today. This is statistics uh, a little misleading because he's been inside Duke territory. This is his first one where he's had to jack one away, and he gets it out to the 34-yard line. So Duke will get the offense back out on the football field after the 47-yard punt of Sean Liss, down by 22. I found a way to make my money really perform. I bought this car, a Pro GT. I refuse to go broke trying to look good. Did I mention this car's a blast? I'm no financial genius. I just feel like one. For a limited time, you can get up to $1,000 cash back in the front-wheel drive Ford Probe. See what I mean? getting into your jeans? <coughs> Try Relax Fit Jeans from Lee. Every day in 34 countries and over 300 cities, Delta Airlines takes off to the world of facts and figures, budgets, and bottom lines. And when the job is done, we bring you back to the world and daddies, boyfriends, girlfriends, and best friends. Delta Airlines. People stopping by. More and more people are stopping by for Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. People stopping by. They're stopping by for a gasoline that controls deposits on valves and keeps your engine's fuel system clean. People stopping by. They're stopping by for smooth acceleration and the full 93 octane of Exxon 93 Supreme. People stop and, by and don't forget, cash and credit prices are now the same. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood, the Duke defense talking things over. They just got off a very successful series, holding Florida State on their first series. And here's Robert Baldwin, eager to be back at work. For the Duke Blue Devils, we're looking first. 35. Fisher against pressure. Passes to Kayak, but not an awful lot of room there. Two yards, maybe. John Hamlet, the sophomore strong free safety from Hampton, Virginia, in on the tackle. Same play that they were unsuccessful on on third down, using Kayak as the tight end. Derek Brooks on the blitz nearly disrupted the play.
by Roy and then finished off by Roberson and Corey Fuller. And he is set actually for a loss of one. James Roberson and company at penetration again. See how far into the backfield they had pushed the Duke offensive line and Baldwin just doesn't have time to get his momentum going and Roberson the redshirt senior out of Lake Wales Florida gets credit for the tackle third and nine Duke down 38-6 blitz is on pass to Pete the kayak and Hamlet's there again two big stops by Sean Hamlet this drive one yard gain fourth down Ray Farmer and his defensive teammates will have to try and do it again as Florida State, the only score they have allowed, came on the miscue on the special teams. They have totally shut down this Duke offense. Kruger back to kick. Samari Roll in punt formation. Roll has it on the run. T. John Redmond flattens him. Well, Redmond never even hit him. He just shoved the blocker right into roll. Oh, a 44-yard punt. Watch this. T. John Redmond just shoved the man trying to block him, Corey Fuller, right into the Mr. Roll, and he went backwards. Samari said, who hit me? He said, Corey, I'm on your team. <laughs> but, but, but. Here comes Danny Cannell. First and 10 at the 38-yard line for Florida State. It was Bobby Bowden's hope that the Seminoles would drive long and hard in that first series. Going to the air for McCorvey. Good coverage by Jamal Ellis. Right about 10 yards before that play was finished, Jamal Ellis did something that that a good cornerback has to do when he is in man coverage. You make the effort to get to the football to avoid the interference call, but you make a little bit of contact just to disrupt the running rhythm of the receiver and deny him a chance of getting to the football. That was a good, good play by a cornerback there by Ellis. Canal, back to throw the screen. It is complete to Warren Dunn. Dunn has some running room. He's brought into Duke territory at the 46, brought down by Zwanich and holds it. Pretty good execution on the middle screen this time. Set up and pass protection. Don't do a great job of it. And slip off, you see, big number 64, Tim Johnson, trying to lead the way. You also have Patrick McNeil, 69, making blocks. And who else? John Zwanich gets a piece of a tackle again. Number 26, Bernard Holsey, also there for the Depth Blue Devils. Jack Setty at 77 coming in. That's a 16-yard pickup by Warren Dunn. Duke showing blitz. Dunn gets blitzed and hit by David Hawkins. Eric Scheidt helps finish up, but it's Hawkins who made the initial hit. Well-timed blitz by Duke that time. They were in the backfield on the count. I think Duke in the Fred Goldsmith years will have a lot of opportunity to recruit some good defensive players. Because if I'm a high school defender and I see how aggressive Duke plays its defense, it'd be a fun group to play for. First recruit for Duke that signed under this regime was LeVance McQueen. Outside linebacker. Second down and ten. Cannell. Pass is complete to Cooper. Great concentration by Andre Cooper, who's caught one for a score today. And it's going to be close to a first down. At the Duke 37, actually 36-yard line. Jamal Ellis on the stop. He's got the first down. The Duke offense has spent a lot of time right there on the pines this afternoon. Spence Fisher looking on. Robert Baldwin right next to him. Hoping for another opportunity. And they hope the scoreboard remains the same when they get back in. Done the pass. Ooh, timing hit by Pollock as he got there right on time with Omar Allison. 
Brandon probably thinking that maybe if I stepped in front of this guy, I could have taken off, but it was perfect timing. Cannell had to sidearm that ball a little bit, and Pollock was trying to go for the interception, and he and the football arrived on the shoulder of Omar Ellison at the same time. Second down and ten. That's Pollock from Thermal, South Carolina. Again, Duke will blitz. They'll send to Cannell. Going long, has Ellison. Touchdown, Florida State. A 36-yard strike. That puts the Seminoles up 44-6. Omar Ellison, the fifth-year senior out of Griffin, Georgia, has 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. If you pick up the blitz, it's man coverage. Cannell set his feet, let it fly, and Ellison, watch him adjust to the football. Get higher than the defender, deny him a chance to jump, you've got the score. Here comes the point after. It is good by Dan Mowry. Another extra point to his field goal performance of the day and the third touchdown pass. The second to that man this afternoon finds Florida State leading 45 to 6. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Connie Mack, keeping his word, fighting for Florida. Connie Mack is leading the fight to cut wasteful government spending and to establish a spending reduction commission to preserve Florida's environment, protecting our beaches and shorelines, and to fight crime by keeping violent criminals locked up. And Connie and his wife Priscilla are recognized and honored as national leaders in the battle to find a cure for cancer. Connie Mack, less taxes, less spending, less government, more freedom. Connie Mack for the United States Senate. Coast to coast, and little towns and big cities in between. One cellular network has everyone talking. Cellular One, clear across America. Call Cellular One of Southwest Georgia today. How incredible a value is the all-new Eagle Town? This is exciting. Certified government accountant Warren Kruger is here to help us find out. Take her for a spin. Come on. He's off. Warren, the wonder accountant, is back. Warren, what do you think? Sounds great. 140 horsepower engine, dual airbags, double wishbone suspension. What would the U.S. government pay for something like this? 14 million tops. Shouldn't that decimal point be over there? Yeah. Test drive a talent at your Jeep and Eagle dealer or call us. So there was absolutely no pressure from any party operatives uh, that brought me to this decision. Oh, really? That's not the story told by party bosses in a Florida courtroom. Testimony in court documents proved Jim Smith's deal to run for agriculture commissioner was planned in August. The Fort Lauderdale Sun Sentinel says the deal is an underhanded scheme and Smith is involved in dirty tricks. The Orlando Sentinel calls the deal simply a smelly political game. November 8th, let's give Jim Smith our decision. No deal. Back at Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, happy crowd of close to 75,000 looking on on a gray October day, but the Florida State Seminoles have added a little reality to the ACC season with a 45-6 lead on the Duke Blue Devils. Adam Geis, five yards deep, won't come out. Looking at the scoring drive, Florida State hasn't wasted any time. Six plays, 62 yards. Took him a minute and 28 to do it. Danny Cannell having an excellent day. His third touchdown of the day after going two weeks without a touchdown pass. And let's go to the sidelines in Mike Hogwood. Steve, you heard Bobby Bowden say at the end of the half, score a touchdown, we're going to start subbing. Already a lot of the second teamers are in on defense on this series. Thad Busby's been warming up. He'll probably be the quarterback. And that depth chart you worked on all week is going to come in handy about now. Depth chart, roster. Spence Fisher on the shovel pass to David Lohman. Lohman cut inside of Daryl Bush and ran into the tackle of Sam Coward and Harold Battles. Battles, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. 
Well, Danny Cannell is a biology major who wants to be a doctor someday, and he bisected, dissected, and otherwise carved up that Duke defense about as neatly as you could do it. Well, dead ball, face pass, defense, automatic first. That's Thad Busby, a redshirt freshman, was a parade All-American, the Gatorade Player of the Year in Florida a couple of years ago out of Pace High School in Pace, Florida. And you see what he has done in his limited time as a Seminole. He'll get a great chance to see some time here. A face mask penalty at the end of the play puts Duke out to the 41-yard line. First and 10. Baldwin gets the handoff, and Baldwin's got some running room up near midfield, out to the 48-yard line. James Roberson hangs on, but it's a gain of close to seven. 45 to six, Florida State in the lead, 6.53 left to go here in the third quarter. Duke trying to get some sort of semblance of being able to move the football, and then they'll try to work on the scoreboard. Got a lot of second teamers out there now for the Florida State defense. Lots of jumping the line. Here's Baldwin trying to get loose. Howard holds him up. Fuller and Hamlet come over to help. He didn't make the tackle, but Derek Alexander starts this play off the wrong way for Florida State, or for Duke. You can see him fighting off the block of John Merrill. Forced Baldwin to swing it wider. He didn't get the tackle, but held him up long enough for the pursuit to finish him off. Sam Coward getting the best hit of the bunch. Third down and two. Here you see Duke on third down conversion this afternoon. Here comes Spence Fisher. Fisher has some time and the receiver, John Jensen. Into Florida State Seminole territory for one of the first times today at the 28-yard line. Clifton Abraham makes the tackle. Good protection that time to enable Spence Fisher to wait for Jensen to break open on the deep bench cut. Had a step on Sean Hamlet and gets the first down inside the Florida State 30. At the 28-yard line, first and 10. Baldwin on the carry down to about the 24-yard line. It's a three-yard gain. This week's Exxon Community Spirit Award goes to Maryland wide receiver Russ Weaver. Russ is a leader with Team Maryland, the athletic department's nationally recognized outreach program. Team Maryland takes student-athlete speakers across the Baltimore, Washington area. Program reaches over 19,000 students in 60 area elementary schools annually. Exxon proud to recognize Maryland's Russ Weaver, and they'll donate $1,000 to the Exxon ACC Kids and College program on his behalf. Second and six for Duke the Florida State 24. Fisher, play action, ball tipped by Hamlet, but he can't come up with it. Fisher has already thrown two interceptions thus far this afternoon. He came perilously close to a third. And that Florida State defense starting to put a few more of the first teamers back in. They don't want to give up a touchdown. Good break on the ball by Hamlet as he tried to find Farquhar, but he just bounced it up too high for himself to catch it on the deflection. Third down and six. Fisher's numbers improving on the afternoon. He needs one here, he needs six yards. He won't get it. Fumble, fumble picked up by Duke. Valida gets on it. They were gonna say he's down anyway, I think, Steve. Renard Wilson who's a sack specialist. He only has 22 tackles coming in, but three and a half sacks per tackle, or per series. Six and a half sacks to lead the ACC and make it at least seven or seven and a half. And could have been ruled a fumble, but they thought Fisher was down. Duke obviously will go for it. Actually, that's one sack every three and a half play. There you go. I knew what you meant. You knew. Fourth down, and 11. Blitz is on, Fisher has a man, Thomas, pulls, he tries to break it up in the end zone, touchdown, Duke! How did Corey Thomas come up with that football? Amazing! A 49-yard strike from Spence Fisher, 
to Corey Thomas. Somebody's looking down on the Duke Blue Devils in a favorable light. No backs, everybody coming. Derek Brooks and Orpheus Roy unload on him. Colsey has this ball and then loses it to Corey Thomas. There's the kick. It is good by Tom Cochran, but just barely. Corey Thomas looked like he pulled it right off the helmet of the defender, and Duke has new life, down 45-13. And if your license plate number is 039-EYC, call within 30 seconds to win $100,000. That's right. Call 555-2445 now, and that money is all yours. We're waiting, but you better hurry. There's only 20 seconds left. Call 555-2445 now. Hurry. Boy, 100 grand on the line and only seconds left to claim it. Need a little more room in your jeans? Three, two, one, gone. Try Lee, the brand that fits. Football means tailgate parties, and tailgate parties mean Food Lion. Their quality foods make every party a winner, because each week, Pepsi and Food Lion are giving away five tailgate party packages of four ACC football tickets and a $50 Food Lion gift certificate. Enter at the Pepsi display. Grand prize is the classic Jeep Cherokee Sport with four-wheel drive and legendary Jeep toughness. Nothing beats football, food, and tailgate parties, and nobody beats Food Lion for quality and extra low prices. Introducing Ford Contour. Gold, a world car for the 21st century. Result, world-class technology in two all-new engines, including a 24-valve V6 that runs 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. Outstanding safety features from dual airbags to a steel safety shell, even a filtration system that removes virtually all dust and pollen from the air. The totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. I'm their father, big brother, <laughs> sometimes even their teacher. At least on my pay, I only have to feed the ones I have at home. A low price is no big thing if you don't get what you want. Now the flame broiled taste of the Whopper from Burger King is made just right for you. Like a Whopper with fries and a drink for just $2.99. The same great taste in a Whopper Junior meal is only $1.99. Individual attention, that's the key. Burger King, get your burgers worth. State defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews has some pretty stern words for his defense that time around, allowing the Duke Blue Devils to score, maybe breathing some new life into their offense. Who knows? 45-13 is still a big lead for the Seminoles, but uh, Tom Cochran will kick it short. This is Rock Preston. And Preston is on his way with just the kicker back to midfield. So Corey Thomas's touchdown may have changed things only momentarily. Once again, Florida State has the football in excellent field position. That was a fifth touchdown reception on the season for Corey Thomas as Duke finally gets a drive, 81 yards. They convert on a fourth down desperation pass to that young man who has had an excellent first season of college football. Drive kept alive by a 29-yard Pass reception, 23-yard pass reception to John Jensen on third down. Thad Busby is in the ball game for Danny Cannell. First and 10 at his own 48. And off goes to Tiger McMillan. McMillan drags tacklers with him. Juanic is the one who finally puts him down at the 47-yard line. Gain of five on the play for Florida State. We saw Tiger McMillan earlier in the game playing at the slot receiver position. They have done that to give the fifth-year senior a little bit of playing time. Now Thad Busby running the show. Moved into the number two spot this week. John Stark had been the backup. Busby may be the most mobile of the Florida State quarterbacks. And he would have come in early had uh, Cannell run into some problems. That hasn't happened so far. Gets a reception, and McCorvey is close to the first down. It'll be a four-yard gain to the 42-yard line. They need the 41 and a half. Zwanich on the tackle. That was a that was a BB. There's John Stark, the Richard Jr., who had been the backup at 
the quarterback spot. Came in both the Miami and Clemson games, but he too had some problems. Kez McCorvey moving towards an individual career record in terms of yardage in one game. You see he is second all-time to Ron Sellers in catches. I don't know if he'll catch Sellers, but he'll have some big numbers. Busted play, and Busby runs into David Hawkins. So on third and one, it'll bring up fourth down, and it'll probably bring the punt unit in. Busby turned to his left, and Zach Crockett went to his right, and Bobby is not happy at all. You don't want to, like you said, Steve, I mean, you don't anticipate Duke making an unbelievable comeback, but you hate to get sloppy after you had the game firmly in command. 45-13 and less than 17 minutes to play, but even still, you, you want to be sharp throughout. Duke faints 11 on the line, or 10 on the line. Now they peel back for a return, and they'll not get it. Sean Liss has done a pretty good job of kicking Duke deep this afternoon. It's recovered, but we have a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. So before we mark the football, let's go back and see what's wrong. for Duke and the holding if it's I don't know if they assess that from the ball or if they will if the holding took place before the ball is away it might be a first down and that certainly seems to be the indication right now if that's the Ronald. case the defensive holding it would still be Florida State football so Ronald Cherry is marking things back to the original line of scrimmage there's Goldsmith talking it over. Oh, he doesn't like it. I don't think he, I think he realizes what you do. Holding on the defense. 10 yards. The offense is trotting back out on the football field, so that's how it looks as we go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, despite that call and despite what has happened on the scoreboard to Duke, you have to be impressed with the way they have kept their heads in this game and are still out there giving a lot of effort on every play. The offense has been sitting on the bench on the sideline trying to figure out what they can do to get another score on the board. Nobody is giving up and nobody saying the word loss. And that's pretty impressive on the part of the Duke Blue Devils. Here comes Thad Busby under center, refreshed with a first down at the Duke 34. Pump fake, going for Omar Ellison. And Omar Ellison makes a great catch, came back for the ball and got it at the one yard line. 33-yard hookup thanks to the good sense of Omar Ellison. Well, sometimes when you throw a deep ball into coverage, it's an advantage to the offense to underthrow the ball because most of the time, the defensive back plays the receiver until deep. He just got the nose of the ball straight up in the air, so this ball sails low. You see Brandon Pollock slipping, or make that Jamal Ellis who slipped and fell. Ellis fumbling it, Ellison fumbling it out of bounds, but Omar said himself, we're talking about Kez McCorvey, Omar came within a half yard of his third touchdown catch on the day. Crockett, McMillan in the backfield, this is going to be Crockett in for the touchdown. Zach Crockett scores for the third time this afternoon from one yard out. And Florida State builds to a 51-13 lead. That holding penalty turns into seven more points in just two plays. Here comes Maori for the point after. He gets it. And Florida State now leads 52-13. Zach Crockett with his 10th touchdown of the year and his third of the afternoon. This time, Thad Busby turned the right way. And Crockett at 245 pounds has the body to bang over all those defenders to put it in the end zone. 
Zach, as Steve mentioned, with his 10th touchdown. He's out of Pompano Beach, Florida, junior college All-American. Went one year to junior college at Hines Community College. And that does be probably talking about that pass to Ellison. He said, you know, Coach, I planned that all the way. And, of course, Crockett planned his touchdown run. His brother Henry plays as a... Uh, an inside linebacker. The scoring drives interesting today. Florida State has had scoring drives that average four plays and 64 yards. This one's five plays and 51 yards, well, aided by a holding penalty on fourth down. Steve, we'll have to get our great stat crew to try and figure out what their yards per play are because they have 549 yards on the day through a little less than three quarters and as you said most of the scoring drives have been lots of yardage in not many plays big plays to omar ellison to kaz mccorby adam dice will just wait and let this one go out to the 20-yard line Lots of action on this busy Saturday afternoon in college football. Wisconsin still holding court at Ann Arbor this afternoon in the third leading. That score is such a shock. That's and not that Nebraska couldn't win the game, but the domination over the unbeaten Buffaloes. That's something. And for the scores that you're looking for, and only the ones you're looking for, 1-900-267-5757. A dollar a minute, and kids, get your folks' permission. Spence Fisher back at work. The chore is a tough one. Here's Fisher on the move. Out to the 25-yard line. Five-yard gain. There's Bobby Bowden and that famous stool that he sits on. He had back surgery just prior to the season. And his doctors want him to use that stool a lot. But you see it's a pad at the bottom so he doesn't have to prop his feet on anything against the ACC 24 2 and 1 well the 2 and 1 were before Florida State became a member of the conference they have yet to lose in conference play in three seasons this would be their 22nd consecutive win this would be a new conference record Robert Baldwin on the move Baldwin in a foot race and Samari Roll has to wrestle him down at the Florida State 32-yard line. Nice gain on the play of 40 yards for Robert Baldwin, whose stats were looking miserable up to that point. Well, he had 32 yards rushing, or I should say Duke had 32 yards rushing as a team before that play. Good seal block, and Robert punched it out to the outside and got it deep into Florida State territory again, so the Duke offense finally starting to move against the... Florida State defense. Correct that yardage to 44. First and 10. Baldwin gets outside momentarily, but gets cleaned up. That time by Todd Rebold, but it was the outstretched arm out of a pile of Duke Blue Devil jerseys of Derek Alexander that trips him up. That puts Rob Baldwin over 1,000 yards after that previous run. The third man and the fourth time that a Duke Running back has gained 1,000 yards, and with three games yet to play, Robert certainly has a chance at setting the single-season mark in Duke history. Although that will be a tough chore, though, Jack, in the next two weeks. Next week, we'll face a Virginia team that is fourth in the country. And then after that, NC State, the team that is second in the ACC against the Rush. We've finished three quarters, and Florida State is looking stronger than ever. 52-13 over Duke. Didn't I tell you? Wasn't that easy? A whole morning of errands made simple thanks to the First Union check card. I mean, are we talking value or what? I mean, you buy your groceries with it, your gas, your cleaning, and the money just comes right out of our checking account. Meanwhile, you pay no interest, you get no bills, you're not standing around waiting for someone who can approve a check. Hey, the errands are all done. Now what? Lunch. Get all the value of the card that works like a check. The check card from First Union. People stopping by. More and more people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. People stopping by. 
They're stopping by for a gasoline that controls deposits on valves for a cleaner engine. People stopping by. Rely on 93 Supreme for a cleaner engine which reduces emissions for cleaner air. People stop and, to and don't forget, cash and credit prices are now the same. It's Red Lobster's Lobster Fest, our once a year celebration. It's a lobster party, a main tail celebration. Got rock tails on the bar. Now's your one chance to try new lobster appetizers and seven of the most exciting lobster dinners ever, all specially priced. It's the grandest, grandest, it's the grandest lobster fest. Only at Red Lobster. It could only come from here. Canada, the home of ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. They're having fun in Tallahassee. The home team has done what they expected them to do. They've... Uh taken Duke to task here through three quarters leading 52 to 13 and they've shown some of the awesome firepower that all of these Seminole fans knew this team had but right now their defense their first team defense is back out on the field Duke looking at second and 13 and Peter Bullwell in on the tackle out of Columbia South Carolina flattened Spence Fisher at the 40-yard line. It's a loss of about eight. The Lee Apparel game summary after three quarters, heavily in favor of the Seminoles. They made big play after big play this afternoon, and the yardage reflects that. 549 yards, and the 431 yards passing, nearly all of that on the throwing arm of Danny Cannell. Third down and 19. Duke down 52-13. Here's the pass to Jensen on the slant. And it doesn't go for much. And then Connell Spain has been on several big plays, and he stops it right there. Well, after giving up the last score and seeing Duke move down into Florida State territory, Mickey Andrews, a defensive coordinator, said, well, first unit, you're not quite done yet. Didn't want to see another score put up on the board, so this offensive group. Hey, baby, number one. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Jesus Hernandez trying to let everybody know what he thinks of his mother as number repeat, one. Right? Repeat all the way, baby. Repeat. Well, Florida State still has a chance at this national championship picture with uh, the results of around the country. You have to watch, of course, Penn State now with Nebraska leading Colorado. And then, of course, you got to stop ignoring Nebraska for the top spot. Well, a lot of people thought if, if one team or another, Duke taking a delay a game penalty to give John Kruger a little bit more punting room, but a lot of people felt that if Colorado or Nebraska dominated that game today, they would leapfrog Penn State regardless of how the Nittany Lions did against Ohio State this afternoon, and that won't be an easy task for the Nittany Lions. Fourth down and plenty in Kruger. Looking to drop one in the corner somewhere. Instead finds the end zone. 44-yard punt, but it comes back after the 20 for Florida State with 13-22 left to go. Canell and Stark together. There's Thad Busby headed out to the football field. He'll be in control of this drive. Well, I think uh, the Florida State offense now is ready to go. I, I thought for a second there Thad was going to catch uh, Thurman Thomas disease and not find his helmet to start a, <laughs> an offensive series. I know it's here somewhere. Thad Busby back out on the football field. Florida State first and ten at their own 20. Tiger McMillan and Dennis Andrews the setback. Still out of the playbook again. E.G. Green trying to pull the corner. And Duke is there. Zwanich throws him for a seven-yard loss. Well, next Saturday, our Exxon ACC Games of the Week. It'll be Virginia and Duke. Or some of you will see these same Florida State Seminoles take on Georgia Tech in Atlanta. 
consult your local TV listings for the game that'll appear in your area. That's new next week. Virginia at Duke from Durham or Florida State at Georgia Tech at Atlanta. We have a flag down on the field as we return to action here in Tallahassee, and it looks like it's going to be a holding call against the Florida State Seminoles. Or that block in the back. Riley and McCorvey return to the offensive set. Illegal hands on the offense. Take the ball back down around the 10-yard line for Thad Busby. Normally, in, in a circumstance after a loss, Steve, you take the play, but Duke trying to get as much field position advantage as they could and to try and limit uh, the play calling possibilities for Bobby Bowden and his offensive staff. We'll see if that does indeed happen or if they'll stay with uh, their wide open attack. First and 10 at the 10. Busby with play action. First and 20, actually. Here comes the long pass to Riley. And there on the play is Jamal Ellis. Riley is a man that they had a lot of hopes for here at Florida State and will probably join the ranks of the many great receivers that have come through here, but Jamal Ellis was his equal on that play. Rolled out to try and buy some time, had to throw a long ball rolling left, which is not easy. Riley had a chance at that ball. Good play by Jamal Ellis to break it up. Once the ball gets there, Ellis can use everything he has. Well, Lee Green comes out. Florida State answered the question on first and 20 from their own 10. They throw a ball 40 yards downfield. Second and 20. Dealey is in the lineup as a wide receiver to the short side of the field. Duke looping for the rush. The pass to Andrews complete. And Eric Scheidt brings him down at the 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of about 11. And it brings up third down and nine. Dennis Andrews, a senior out of Austin, Texas. A guy who has not played much in his Florida State career, but has hung around, kept working on the scout squad and all that, getting some opportunity to play. So Florida State faced with third and actually 10 now from the 20-yard line on third down conversions. They've been getting it done mostly on first and second. Right. Big plays down the field have been really the underscore of the day today. Duke will show blitz. The question is how many? They bring them all. The pass incomplete for E.G. Green. So the punting unit comes back on. Sean List starting to get busy. And Duke now figures to have pretty good field goal, field position when they get this ball back. You know, Sean List has hit some good punts today. Pinning Duke back and then when he's had to air one out. He's done that effectively as well. In fact, Duke has an excellent chance to start this drive in Seminole territory. Bliss gets a nice punt away. Fair catch for Geis at the 47-yard line. His own. A 33-yard punt by Sean Liss. No return by Adam Geis. 52-13. Seminoles in command. Your job puts you in a world of hurt. You need powerful relief. Power, BC Power. No matter where you're hurting, you need the power of BC. BC Power in the powder. The power of BC. When you need strong relief, BC Powder stops pain fast. The power of BC. In business, there never seems to be enough of it. And the last thing you can afford to do is run out of it. Time. So rest assured, Delta Airlines will help you make the most of it. With over 4,900 flights a day to over 300 cities around the world. And best of all, we'll make sure you arrive relaxed and refreshed. With plenty of time to spare. Delta Airlines. It's really going to be a fun place to come to a football game. It already is, but it's going to be a real state-of-the-art facility when they're done. Third and inches, Robert Baldwin looking for the first down. He's going to be close to it. I think 
If they mark his forward progress at the 21, then he should have it. And they're going to do just that. Those sky boxes that Mike mentioned, and it is a first down, behind those sky boxes on that side of the football field are classrooms. There aren't many places in the city of Tallahassee where this university can expand. And so they've used the football stadium for a dual purpose, to better the football stadium, but also to construct classroom space behind that press box or tower of our sky box complex that we see. Here's Fisher giving to Baldwin on first down, and Baldwin inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line, picked up by Sean Hamlet and also Devin Bush. Good drive for Duke, started at their own 47-yard line. Well, they got that first down pass to Kaya to get themselves going, and now using Robert Baldwin, who was close to 100 yards on the afternoon. Second down, probably one yard shy right now. Both for Baldwin and for Duke's offense for another first down. Three wide outs for Spence Fisher. Looking as Thomas nearly picked off by Clifton Abraham. Spence Fisher has danced away from trouble a few times when Florida State defenders have not been able to catch the football. This is the third or fourth time this afternoon that the Florida State defender had as good a look at the ball as the intended target. Abraham forgot to bring the left hand to that party and nearly one-handed the ball into the arms of Corey Thomas. And Duke is, no, it's Florida State going to burn a timeout. Didn't have the right personnel on the field. So they get the right people out there, and with 9-11 left to go here in the fourth quarter, Florida State leading comfortably 52-13, but it's Duke knocking on the door. So with 9-02 left to go in the football game, Florida State looks ahead to next week. They're at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was idle today. And there's the first down. See, they should have known you had that eyeball properly. Could have told him, could have saved him that. Fred Goldsmith looking on, his team. It, it, what's important for Fred Goldsmith and Duke right now is to now start preparing for next week, get his team mentally back in, get a score here. It's not totally unrealistic to think that Duke can put some points on the board in a hurry, but they're going to have to really get it done. Here is Fisher going for Kayat behind his back. Devin Bush is covering on the play. It's second down and 10. Duke can get another first down inside the one yard line. You hit the point that is crucial right now for Duke because the seven and zero start is wonderful, but you don't want to end up seven and four. You want to win as many of these final four as you can. You're not going to win today, but today's loss, you don't want to affect the final three games. Go back home to play Virginia. Won't be an easy ball game. Baldwin is wrapped up and thrown by Orpheus Roar, the junior out of Miami, who has three tackles for loss thus far this season, just gained his fourth. Orpheus Roy, named after the Greek mythological god of the sky. He had Rob Baldwin looking skyward as he planted him in the Dope Campbell turf with some help from his friends. You are a wordsmith. Yes, you are. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. And that's all I can respond to. First down. And 13. Shovel pass, tried many times. This time it's successful. Touchdown, Duke! From 13 yards out, Rob Baldwin scores, and the Blue Devils make their visit in Seminole territory count. Fred Goldsmith happy with the results because as you alluded to a few moments ago, Steve, they, they want to get as many points as they can on here to maintain the confidence. Don't let the fact that you've lost for the first time take away from what you've done in your first seven games. New kicker, Barrett Boston, with a kick, and it is good. Boston with the kick and the point after touchdown, and Florida State's lead over Duke is back to 32. People stopping by. With a new Exxon MasterCard, you can earn unlimited rebates for free gasoline. And the more you use it at Exxon, or for other purchases like meals, 
travel, shopping, the more free gasoline you'll earn. There's no annual fee either, so apply at Exxon, where cash and credit prices are now the same. Problem. Your home's been a bit drafty lately. Solution? Go to Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's has the storm doors, insulation, heaters, and fireplace accessories. Everything to keep you toasty all winter long while saving you energy and money. Plus, nobody beats our prices guaranteed. So, how do you keep winter from leaving you cold? Lowe's. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Resistant casuals in 100% cotton from Lee. at Tallahassee, Florida State and Duke going at it. Duke getting set to kick off after the touchdown run of 13 yards by Robert Baldwin, the 12th of his season. And that just leaves him three shy of the Duke mark for touchdowns in a year. Rock Preston at the 21. Preston gains momentum up to the 39-yard line. 18-yard return as Robert Baldwin capped the scoring drive with a 13-yard run. Actually on the shovel pass, 10 plays, 53 yards, and just 348 to get it done. Brett Goldsmith talking to one of his staff on the sidelines as they make plans for the rest of this game and next week to try and keep things as positive as possible. Flag on this play, the catch by Philip Riley, complete in Duke territory at the 15-yard line. But let's see what the flag has in store first back at the 40. Ronald Cherry to make the call, and it's going to be a hold against the offense, so take this play back. So Busby's pass. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Bob Schieffer in New York. There's been an unusual incident at the White House. Reporters say that bullets were fired into the White House press briefing room this afternoon. As far as we know, no one has been injured. At least one bullet pierced a window of the press room and a ridge was visible in a nearby wall. We're told that uh, reporters say that they heard multiple shots. Secret Service agents advised reporters to keep down. The White House Chief of Staff, Leon Panetta, uh, rushed to the press area to see what had happened. President Clinton, who is uh, just home from an overnight flight from Saudi Arabia, was in the White House residence at the time, which is a considerable distance from the area where the White House press room uh, is located, and all, all involved are safe. There have been no injuries, we have been told so far. There are some reports that uh, one person uh, has been taken into custody by the Park Police, but the District of Columbia Police say at this point that they know of no arrests. Repeating, some shots, some gunshots, we don't know if they were from a rifle or from a pistol, were fired into the White House press room this afternoon, the briefing room where officials generally go to give uh, press briefings uh, to reporters. We are told that no one was injured. There are unconfirmed reports that one person has been arrested. We'll keep you informed of this. We'll bring more details as they become available. 
but just repeating the basic story, an incident this afternoon at the White House, gunshots fired into the White House press briefing area. At this point, no one is believed to have been injured. This is Bob Schieffer, CBS News, New York. This has been a CBS News special report. Looking deep, has E.G. Green there, and looks like it's going to be picked off by Ray Farmer. And a penalty flag is thrown in. Unsportsmanlike conduct likely after the play against Duke. Yep. Ray Farmer spun the ball in front of E.G. Green, and that's uh, taunting, unsportsmanlike conduct. And so instead of having the ball in a 25, they'll have it back inside the... 15 yard line. And it'll be half the distance from there. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Gets the receiving team. First down. Farmer with the interception and the penalty, I think, Steve, comes as much from the frustration for Duke. It's been a long day. They have not played as well as they wanted to play. You make a good play, you're happy about it, but right there dropping the ball at the face of the intended target through the flag and that's the proper call they want to make sure that there aren't any kind of physical confrontations because of verbal battles and that was a point of emphasis this year and they made several rule changes against fighting and some kind of incident that may lead to something like that First and ten, Joe Pickens is back in the ball game. Another flag on the play. A lot of backup people for both sides now as this game winds to a close. Flag stops the clock with 7-10 left to go. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five. So false start there. T.C. White, the new receiver or running back in the game for Robert Baldwin. Next week, well... One or the other, really. Next Saturday, our Exxon ACC Games of the Week. Some of you will be in Durham when Virginia takes on Duke. Others will see Florida State at Georgia Tech. Check your local listings for the game in your area. And there's our Jefferson Pilot truck here in Tallahassee. Here is Pickens getting off to White. And White is bent over backwards at the... 12, actually the 11-yard line. Andre Wadsworth, the redshirt freshman from Miami, in on the tackle. Clock moving now, 6.53 left to play. 52-20. Florida State's made not only Duke no longer unbeaten, but they made a statement for themselves. A statement that they are still alive at this national championship race. And they intend to keep their ACC unbeaten streak going. Second down. Quick drop, quick pass to Jensen. Incomplete, Clifton Abraham covering. That stops the clock with 6.27 left. Daryl Bush on the blitz hit Pickens just as he released the ball. That was the other part of that crossing route they ran before when they hit Kai at the tight end. This time, Farquhar, the tight end, goes out. The split end comes in, and you try and get that pick. You know, it's illegal to do that. It just happened to get in the way. It just happens. It's third down. Pickens on a naked rollout. Boy, does he feel alone. Wilson in on the stop. He'll get credit for the sack. Others help. It's fourth down. Now they went on the... Naked boot, as you said, and the intended receiver fell down. He turned the corner, and there was nobody to throw it to, and he is not a runner at all, and not much that Pickens could do there, but take the sack. Florida State looking like they want to go after this punt in the end zone of Kruger. They peel back. Samari Roll is pushed back. He was on 42. Roll headed upfield. Make sure the advance is no more than the 48-yard line of Duke. Now, this was a day, Steve, for uh, unbeaten marks to go down on the afternoon in addition to unbeaten Duke. Auburn is just now taking the lead. They are 7-0, leading Arkansas by three. 
Tennessee with a big advantage early. The other unbeaten team, Maryland, up at halftime 21-3. Nebraska knocked Colorado from the unbeaten ranks 24-7 this afternoon. There's the scoreline number. First and 10, Florida State in Duke territory at the 48-yard line. Blitz is on, Kowski's pass, a rope to Philip Riley at the 31-yard line. A gain of 17, Jamal Ellis on the stop. So it's another first down for the Seminoles, who continue to march in Duke territory as they have. There's Danny Cannell. A great day for him. And he's thanking all of those who made it possible. He should pay a visit to 88 real soon. I'm going through the defensive side right there. <laughs> reverse and McMillan's on his way. Eric Scheidt brings him down at the 20-yard line. Gain on the play of 11, maybe 12. Dr. McMillan on the turn. Now they have not buttoned it up at all this afternoon. They have unveiled the complete package. They've done everything but a halfback pass. Reverses, fake reverses. They thought of a wide receiver pass, but never got it out in time. 45, clock moving, 52-20, Florida State comfortably in front. Blitz is on, the ball is loose, but Busby covers up for a two-yard loss to the 22. Swanich is in the vicinity. Florida State next week at Georgia Tech. Many of you will see that game. Duke next week returns home to take on Virginia. Others of you will see that in the northern regions of our ACC viewing areas. The rest of the way for Florida State, in addition to that Georgia Tech game next week, then the battle with Notre Dame in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando at Raleigh, and then against the Florida Gators to finish out the year. And it's the remaining portion of that schedule that has Florida State feeling like they can still have a chance to defend their national championship. Timeout on the field, 52-20. Florida State wants to talk things over with 3.56 left to go on the four. The all-new Mazda Protégé has a remarkably big interior. After all, it's bigger inside than a Honda Civic. Bigger than a Nissan Altima. Even bigger than a 5 Series BMW. In fact, the only thing that's small about the Protégé is its introductory lease price. The all-new Mazda Protégé. Lease a well-equipped Protégé DX for just $179 a month, $1,000 down. Bonjour, class. Ça va? Here we go. Just a sec. A lot of people bank at First Union, and they're individuals, each and every one. Oh, play on. So that's why we customize checking accounts, individually designed loans, and personalized banking. Because at First Union, we try never to forget that banking is about relationships. That's service. And at First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. You're an American. You've got the right to play bingo, the right to monster truck rallies, and the right to big, juicy burgers. So what happened? Someone slaps a low price on a fried little burger and calls it a deal? That's un-American. You have the right to go to Burger King. The right to get a Whopper, flame broiled, not fried. And the right to get that Whopper any size you want, with fries and a drink. Starting at just $1.99. It's all there in the Constitution. <laughs> Look it up. Burger King, get your burgers worth. There's Kaz McCorby. He said yesterday, we may have two men but he was the chief weapon of destruction this afternoon that Florida State brought upon Duke. Over 200 yards in, in receptions. Here's Florida State looking for the end zone again, and they'll throw it out of there, intended for Melvin Pearsall on second and 13. They're on the Duke 22-yard line. They're leading 52 to 20. Many say, well, why is Florida State still doing this? Florida State doesn't have anything like an eat-the-clock offense. This is their offense. They do it all the time. It's all they practice. And it's all Bobby Bowden wants them to do. 
when they put that fast break offense in last year, I mean, they totally committed themselves to it. Third down, 13. 3.49 to play. Again, Buster looking for the end zone. Wants Riley. A great play by Jamal Ellis to knock the ball away. That stops the clock with 3.43 left. Dan Mowry wants a chance to kick and no, not going to get it. Just got informed. Stay on the sidelines. We'll try one more time. There's Mowry, who's had numerous occasions to kick one field goal and seven extra points, so he's happy. Actually, six. They went for a two point conversion. A play Duke thought they had diagnosed, but Tiger McMillan, who was a starter here two years ago, makes it work to the one. Great anticipation by McMillan of where the crease might be as he slammed on the brakes and cut it back up the middle instead of trying to run to the corner where the pursuit was going. First and goal. They're at the one-yard line. And now, another timeout charged to Florida State. They have one remaining. They have none remaining. Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. By First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. By Win dixie the low-price leader. By Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's knows home improvement. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by your local Mazda dealers. Back for the closing minutes here in Tallahassee. Three minutes and six seconds left. It is second. It's first and goal. From the one. Busby hands off to McMillan. Flags fly everywhere. Billy Granville tackles McMillan behind the line of scrimmage. We had motion on the left side of the Florida State line that'll back it up anyway. Stops the clock with 3.03 to play. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yards. So Duke's got to accept it whether they want to or not. Goes back to the six-yard line. Florida State, the path to defend their national championship still has many obstacles. They've got Georgia Tech next week, Notre Dame, NC State, Florida. Here comes McMillan. Headed to the corner, but there's nothing there. John Swanich, as he has been many times this afternoon, and on the tackle at the four-yard line. And then they've got to have help. They've got to have somebody derail Penn State. Well, somewhere I, along the way. Well, as I said, though, Steve, before, because of the way in which Nebraska beat Colorado this afternoon, there is certainly that possibility that the, the pollsters may jump the Cornhuskers over Penn State, even if Penn State stays unbeaten. And off to the pullback. And that is Rendell Long. And Long gets down to about the two-yard line. For Duke next week, they will tangle with another strong defense, the Virginia Cavaliers, but that will be at home at Durham. Then on to Raleigh for a battle with the good defense in the Wolfpack, and then their annual clash with North Carolina, also at Wallace Wade, to wrap up the regular season. They really feel like they've won enough games to get to a bowl game now, but they'd like to improve those chances with a few more wins. Long and Tiger McMillan in there. Here's Busby. Out there by himself. Tied for the end zone. He's got a 
for the touchdown. The 2.15 left. Thad Busby scores. And it's 58 to 20. They're happy here in Tallahassee. The offense that they had wondered where it had been has come back. Danny Cannell has showed him that. This is just confirmation of a fact we pretty much had well in hand at halftime. 38-6 at halftime, and they've tacked down three more second-half scores. That must be engineering a few of those, and he gets the touchdown on the bootleg. I think the coaches upstairs saw on the previous play that Duke really bit hard on the dive fake, and with Busby's speed, they thought he could outrun Zawanich to the corner, and he did just that. The score for the first time in his college career. Well, today's Burger King players of the game for Florida State comes as no surprise. Even though he didn't score, Kaz McCorby, 10 catches, 207 yards, and for Duke, John Swanich was around the ball a lot this afternoon. Six tackles, one sack, a fumble recovery that he returned that eventually helped set up a Duke touchdown two plays later on a punt that was fumbled. Those are our Burger King players of the game. There's Kez McCorvey, engaging young man. Second best receiving day in Florida State history and another Good day, albeit a losing effort at the office of John Zawanich. And Maori out to kick. As with 2.15, we put the finishing touches on this one. 59-20, Florida State leading Duke. They will remove Duke from the unbeaten ranks. And now, as of this hour, there are only two unbeatens in the ACC. The other being NC State. Redmond has this kick. Dijon Redmond straight ahead to the 26-yard line. Redmond on the run back. And Duke will get it with 2.08 remaining, first and 10. Harold battles in on the tackle for Florida State. The Duke Blue Devils in their last three games, as Jack told you, they'll face three good defensive teams. North Carolina is an excellent defensive team. So it won't be easy for them, but as Jack said, they feel that a win in any of those three games could improve their bowl status greatly. They've been an exciting team to watch, and they still are. Pickens gets it off to T.C. White. And he is brought down quickly by Greg Spires, back up nose guard. Here's that Busby with a little attention to a thumb. Busby installed this week as the second quarterback behind Danny Cannell. He would have come in had Cannell faltered early, but Danny Cannell did anything but. An outstanding afternoon offensively for Florida State. John Stark was the guy who had to watch from the sidelines. You see what John had done on the year coming into today's play. He'd get a chance to tee it up this afternoon. Second down. There's T.C. White. Second and 13. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. I want to remind you once again, the next Saturday, more exciting ACC college football. Our Exxon ACC Games of the Week. Virginia at Duke or Florida State at Georgia Tech. Consult your local TV listings for the game that will appear in your area. That's new next week. Virginia at Duke or Florida State at Georgia Tech right here. 55 seconds remaining in this one in Tallahassee. 59 to 20 is the score. That's pretty much going to be the score when this final minute ticks away. Pickens back to throw, and he's going to be set. Dropped on the play by Dulac Garrier. That is the fifth sack of the day for Florida State. seconds. Game will end as both teams head to meet each other at midfield. It's been a tough afternoon for that man, Craig Goldsmith, in his return to Tallahassee. 
where he coached at Florida A&M in the defensive secondary. He meets with Bobby Bowden at midfield. The Florida State Seminoles have prevailed 59-20. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Out to help give Collins the time to throw. Down five, Wisconsin take Florida the State ball. Last week, Seminoles had a lot of things to prove to a lot of people. And Duke? Well, they couldn't find a much better test to see how their unbeaten record would hold up. Burt Reynolds was on hand to do some holding up of his own. Chief Osceola's spear. Second quarter is really what broke it open. Danny Cannell with a great passing day, but the receivers had an even better receiving one. Omar Ellison with the scoring grab. That came after a Kez McCorvey reception set it up, and it would happen again with McCorvey right over the middle. Kez eventually caught from behind, but not before he had taken it 62 yards. That set up a Zach Crockett score and made it 28-6. to six. With the defense opened up, it was time to go back to the running game. Huge hole right in the middle for Warwick Dunn. He will coast in from 32 yards out and the offense at last was rolling 35 to 6. Time to give the number two Thad Busby a little playing time. You want to see a pretty pass and a sensational catch? I don't won't need to say more. Busby going deep to Ellison and that is just pretty. Couldn't get it in but it set up another 52 to 13 Seminoles. Busby would get one himself later on on the quarterback bootleg. This one maybe should have been the homecoming game, 59 to 20, the final. Randy, you were there on the sideline. Uh, what was the feeling there? I know there, there wasn't really a feeling of urgency, but uh, or panic rather, but there had to be a feeling of urgency that something had to get done. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Don. But it, it really didn't take Florida State long to realize that they just had too much team speed for for Duke. Don't get me wrong, Duke isn't a bad ball club, but they're not ready to step up in FSU's league just yet. Maybe FSU got the days mixed up as. Don indicated this game, instead of the Clemson one, should have been homecoming. Welcome home, FSU. We've missed you over the last two games. Good to see that arm's in working order, Danny. Hey, Kez, are you sure that shoulder's really hurting you? Uh, Zach, you sort of like doing that touchdown thing. And you guys on the defense, well, we're just glad you're wearing garnet and gold. We did a lot better. We did better. Nell did a good job. Receivers did a good job. Our first line did a pretty good job. Defense is really playing excellent. We didn't need to go out there and play a close ball game today. We didn't need, not need to. That just, that just what, that wouldn't be a good sign. But all signs are looking up. Big plays, the story of the day. Danny Cannell almost 400 yards through the air, three touchdowns. Good to get the monkey off his back. Things went our way, you know, we got a, a couple uh, good plays and guys made some great catches and we blocked well. So, you know, we're capable of doing this week in and week out if we can just execute like we're capable of. McCorvey's 207 yards catching the football catches more than your eye. But you got to give the pat on the back to the defense. Duke could only manage 45 yards of total offense in the first half. The message is clear. It showed what we could do for one half, but we got to put together a full quarter game. When we came in and we sat down on our laws the first half. You know, you get such a big lead, you tend to want to relax and try to play as many guys as you can, and then sometimes they end up hurting you. But it didn't hurt too much. FSU's defense playing with reckless abandon, and they're having fun. It really shows. We were flying around the ball, making plays in the backfield. You know, I think we got a little lackadaisical coming into the second half, but, you know, we played hard as a defense. Our mentality was to come in and just dominate the entire football game. We knew that, that we were 